Hey everybody, welcome back. I wanted to announce my new project. I recently acquired a 1966 Buick Wildcat. And a lot of people aren't familiar with those, but it's similar to an Impala SS. It's a big B-body framed car. Um, you know, big giant land yacht of a vehicle. This one's in pretty sweet condition. Uh, it's a convertible. The convertible top's a little rough. Uh, but you know, nothing that's, that's impossible to fix. The interior's in really good shape. Um, you know, it needs to be cleaned up. There's a little bit of like mildew in there. Um, it sat for a long, long time. The guy told me it sat for like 15 years in kind of a human environment. You know, it had kind of a quickie paint job at one point. You can see paint's peeling up, you know, it's bubbling here and there. You know, not great, but, you know, it's fine for now. Um, and this car has a uh, power top, so it's automatic, like an up-down switch. And I got the engine out so far. It has a 401 cubic inch Buick Nailhead V8. Um, interesting thing about those engines, they're, they're uh, back in those days in the... 60s they made uh all the different general motors uh divisions made their their own engines even though they may have been similar in displacement they were very different uh here it is over here i've got it mostly taken apart and man was this thing stuck i think it just got water in it um the head gaskets leaked that's kind of a common thing that happens when these things get old that's not supposed to have a hole that's a coolant passage this cylinder was really stuck. Uh, you know, you look in the lifter galleys, these were, are still stuck in there. Some of them were loose, but uh, camshaft is kind of stuck. I mean, it's like somebody poured epoxy down this thing and just let it set. Nothing came out easily. Um, fortunately though, I don't think it's cracked. I've taken a look around, there appear to be no cracks. Um, you know, the cylinder walls are really rough, but I don't think it's ever been rebuilt. Um, and these things make gobs of torque. This thing makes uh, like 445 pounds of torque. It's crazy. So I'm real excited to get this thing rebuilt. These are real cool engines. Um, there's the crankshaft. Journals aren't bad. Um, you know, a little rusty, a little scraped. I think it had some oil starvation. Look at the pan. I mean, I cleaned this out a little bit, but this was like filled with pudding. It looked like this gross gray pudding. It was a mess. Um, again, I think it's just water got in there over, over the years and the, the oil turned into sludge. And then look at this. That's a bearing in there. But as we, as most of us know, that connecting rod should be moving. Every single one of them are completely locked up. I mean, this engine, would not move for me at all. I had to loosen the crank, loosen all the connecting rods. I hammered out the pistons that I could. I had to work the crank around. Um, finally got it all apart. Uh, make sure you're careful if you have to use force. You don't want to break anything. I mean, these pistons, I don't care. I know they're shot. Um, but, you know, they're aluminum. They can break. Um, but, yeah, all of them are just you know, seized. I think the rods are in decent shape. They use forged rods in these, so they're nice and strong and they hopefully are okay. Here's the transmission. Um, that poured out nice clear red fluid. Um, these are like a, um, like a TH400, but some of the bigger uh, luxury cars like Cadillacs and Buicks, they called it an ST. 400, which is super turbine, basically the same transmission as the TH400, except these have what's called the switch pitch torque converter. And what that is, it's like a dual speed torque converter. So um, the idea is when you stop at a light or stop the car, the torque converter kicks down into like high stall. So it goes up to like an 1800 RPM stall or a 2000 RPM stall. And then once you get moving, it switches it back down to like 1100 
Um, it was kind of the precursor to a lockup torque converter to help get better mileage. Um, you can identify them. This one's never been replaced. The switch pitches have uh, the varial pitch veins and they're, they're extra spot welds along the outside of the torque converter case. Um, and I guess they're a little finicky because they used to have like a, in addition to the transmission kick down, there was like another lever to activate and deactivate the switch pitch, which I guess if the thing got out of adjustment, it could kind of be a headache. But the cool thing is, is you can wire it up different ways. I've been reading on the Team Buick website, you can wire it up to just a toggle switch on your dashboard. Uh, or you can wire it up to like your brake lights so it turns on when you, you know, when you hit the brakes. Um, it's cool stuff, so I'm looking forward to messing with that. And the heads, I mean, look at this. That was all like this powdery rust. I don't even know what it is. It's gross, though. But fortunately, I don't think the heads are cracked. Um, they seem to be in good shape. Uh, we'll see. I got to get it to the machine shop. Obviously, these things need to be rehabbed. The valves were kind of stuck too. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's an exciting new project, and I hope to share some fun information with you all as we move along. Take care.